Go over to uh, Congressman Louis Gohmert, who joins us from Capitol Hill. Uh, Congressman Gohmert, uh, welcome back to Washington Watch. Always great to see you. Great to be with you. Thank you, Tony. All right. We were talking about the uh, it started the program about unconstitutional surveillance taking place of members of Congress. Now, some would think that's far fetched. But when we look at what just happened in the filing of the special counsel uh, in Durham's report uh, or court filings on Friday to suggest that the president of the United States was spied upon, this unfortunately appears to be par for the course for the deep state. Tell us about it. Well, it is par for the course, but it shouldn't be. And you can't keep a republic if you don't have checks and balances. And that means that one branch is not constantly spying on another. And that's what we had with uh, uh, the Clinton campaign with the DNC spying on the president. Uh, that is being confirmed now. But uh with Troy Nails, we know the Capitol Police were coming in and surveilling his office, taking pictures, and that is a gross violation. We are each member of Congress is has the privilege of the communications with that member of Congress. And to be more specific, uh, I've had whistleblowers from the FBI. The FBI has no right whatsoever. And the Supreme Court made this clear in the William Jefferson case. They have no right to, to even get a search warrant and go through a member of Congress's office unless somebody that's part of the legislature screens material first to make sure it's not privileged before the executive branch can get a hold of it. The Supreme Court made that clear. If FBI agents, if intel people cannot be safe in what they communicate to a member of Congress, then there will be no, there is no proper oversight. So to find out, as I did, that we had mail come in from a missionary a dear friend of mine went to Texas A&M, and uh, that letter goes to the DOJ first. And keep in mind, we have entirely different zip codes. It's not like, well, there was one digit different. No, it's very different. It should never have gone to the DOJ, and yet they clearly put their mark on it then and had opened my mail. And then a day after that, we get a letter that was sent from my district, just a constituent that has the right of privacy and privilege in our communications. It went to the DOJ for their review before they allowed me to get my mail. And they sat on that, Tony, for about four and a half months. It is an outrage. But here again, Pelosi has upended the Congress. She is required that before anybody can come talk to you, you have to first notify, give notice who's coming and what they want to talk about and all this kind of thing. It's never been done in the history of the Congress. And this Democrat administration, this bunch of Democrats running the House, they have turned it upside down. Privilege means nothing to them. And the way the House operates, unfortunately, in this particular case, a majority, they have a majority and they set the rules right. and she can do basically whatever she wants. That, that's exactly right. Um, you would think that there were people that cared enough about protecting the republic in the Democratic Party. They would have said something, but they didn't. And actually, people have said, how could you leave Congress and run for the attorney general? Uh, you must have really gotten sick of it there. Look, Tony, I was looking forward to being in the majority. I already had a rule I wanted to get passed next year when we got into the majority. And that would be that all of the Democrats that voted to pass their rules that required members of the House to go through metal detectors and to wear masks all the time, that those rules would still apply to those that voted for it, but the rest of us would be free of the metal detectors, free of the masks, and would be free indeed. Uh, I, I like your thinking, um, but here's the bottom line that I want our listeners and viewers to understand that while Nancy Pelosi, and, and, and part of this goes like the proxy voting, we've talked about the proxy voting, 
but the courts won't touch it because of the separation of powers. The Congress has the right to set its own rules. So the courts aren't going to judicial arm is not going to stick stick itself into this. So this bottom line is it comes down to whoever we elect to Congress. And if you're going to elect leftists to run the Congress, this is what you're going to get, putting the entire nation at risk. So it's in the hands of the American people, really. Right. Yeah, and that's the old adage, uh, democracy ensures a people are governed no better than they deserve. Uh, I was hoping that the Supreme Court, the courts would take up some of the abuses, and, and I've got a suit uh, uh, with a couple other members over the metal detectors being pretty outrageous, but uh, the truth is I I really cherish the times I sat down with Justice Scalia and, you know, we didn't talk about things he couldn't talk about. We exchanged a lot of stories. But at one point, Justice Scalia said, look, Louie, if you guys who have the power to change what you're doing in Congress, don't change it, don't work to change it then don't come running to us over to the Supreme Court to fix what you refuse to fix. And so I hear him still saying that kind of thing. And I'm afraid that's what got applied when it came to some of these rules in the House. I I, I feel your frustration, but also I know you cherish the Constitution. And uh, again, this comes back to the American people and who they put in power. And uh, we've got to make sure we have free, fair elections working through state legislatures and then going to the polls and voting in the fall. Louie, we're up against the break. Always great to talk with you, my friend.